guys welcome back or welcome to my channel my name is Brianna and today's video is going to be all about how to prepare for a new school year or just how to start the new school year strong we're going to do some back to school shopping I'm going to tell you what I put in my backpack and my pencil case and also just give you some student advice tips and tricks so without further ado make sure to like and subscribe and let's get into the video these are really cute post notes they're like a pastel pink and better for the environment apparently but it's literally $3. Okay, I think I'll get these ones then. I love the pastels. You can get mild liners on Amazon, but you can also just get like the individual ones if you only like specific colors, like the pastels. My personal favorite are the light blues, but they only have like the dark one right now. It's completely sold out. So I think I'll just settle on these two. Okay, the next essentials that every student needs to have if they don't have an iPad, like me, is to have actual notebooks. These ones are by Five Star. Usually I just get the Hillroy ones because they're cheaper and I don't really care about the thickness of my paper. But the one thing that you need to have are different colors. These are just like the main colors that I usually gravitate towards. Math is always red. Chemistry was always blue and then biology was always green and those are the only correct colors for your subjects and usually I had my electives or literature just be on like loose paper in a binder I only ever had one binder a lot of people like to recommend a separate binder for each subject and their notebook and loose papers and I just think that's way too heavy that's way too much to have in a backpack especially when you're gonna have textbooks so I just prefer to have it in notebooks with enough pages usually a hundred to like 200 are good enough for a semester which is usually four months so I'm just gonna get these three I think but I am planning on switching over to being to like a digital student just because everyone says it's so much easier to do notes on an iPad and stuff but I just never pulled the trigger on actually buying one so we're gonna go with physical notebooks this time. Another essential that a lot of people forget about that they actually need are wooden pencils because it's usually when you fill out a Scantron or a bubble sheet that looks like this like for multiple choice that goes through an automatic scanner you're, they usually ask you to fill it out with like a graphite pencil so you actually do need a pack of these probably not this many so I would recommend just like grabbing one or two if you have them at home. This is a little excessive, but honestly, a staple. Hear me out, these like big packs of lead pencils are everyone's favorite thing. And I agree, they write pretty nicely. They write in 0.5 millimeter. But I think when you get a bigger pack of like 12 of these, you're, you're more likely to lose them because you just have so many, you just like don't care as much. I don't know if that's just me. I usually just own like two pencils and if you guys breeze through these really quickly, then I recommend just bringing only two with you or just buying an actual like pair of pencils instead of like a 12 pack. You always need color pens. So I usually look for one that has black, blue, and red. So this is perfect. Okay, so I just got in and now I'm gonna give you guys a detailed what's in my backpack and let you know what my back to school essentials are. So when I was in high school, I used this Kankin. I feel like tote bags aren't as realistic in high school because usually you have a lot of physical textbooks and that's always gonna weigh on like one side of you. So like I mentioned in Staples, I'd like to have different colored notebooks. So the first thing that you'll see in my bag is one big binder for loose papers from every class and I just use color dividers for these. And then I have colored notebooks and then in the back of my bag, I usually have a laptop. In my experience, having a computer or a laptop was a student essential. A lot of students have transitions over to tablets or iPads, but I still prefer using a traditional laptop. They usually have bigger screens, specs, they're easier to type on and do assignments with. So if you're a student on the market for a new laptop, then I highly recommend the Gigabyte G5. And I think this is a great option for students because it has that balance between a productivity and pleasure as it does double as a gaming laptop. So in terms of specs, this laptop is 15.6 inches, which makes it super easy to multitask. You can split up the screen with two browsers really easily. The processor keeps up right with it. It has an 11th gen Intel processor and a GeForce RTX 30 series GPU which is really good for video rendering time as well as gaming. I took this all the way to Korea and Australia with me actually to do work on and I easily ran like 10 different applications. Notion, Covenants, all my different web browsers. I reviewed some footage, Word, Excel, like all the student apps you need can be run at the same time on this. And that's like one thing that's really important when it comes to picking out a laptop for students. You can feel like we have so many different lives we need to have a computer that can keep up. So that's why I recommend the G5. Not to mention this is perfect for pleasure as well like I was saying earlier the GPU processor and the refresh rate are really good for gaming it has a 144 Hertz refresh rate which is literally better than the monitor I have right now so that's another feature that I really appreciate and also really just like the aesthetic it's clean and simple and you guys know I love a good RGB keyboard so like I was saying a laptop is definitely a student essential for me so with back to school season right around the corner I highly recommend the gigabyte g5 you should definitely check out gigabytes website and their back to school campaign that they're currently running thank you to gigabyte for sponsoring this portion
portion of the video and even though this is like a 15 to almost like 16 inch laptop it does fit in my kinkin i don't know if you guys can see but it does fit in the back super easily the next things i keep in my backpack are a pencil case and a calculator this one was actually given to me by my school it's just a regular texas instruments one i would actually wait before getting one because some schools or certain courses require a specific kind of calculator so i would just wait before buying anything and then this is just my pencil case in here i fit one tape white out three different highlighters because i'm kind of extra you only actually ever need one if you have different colored pens but i also like to have three different pens these are muji gel ballpoint pens in 0.35 millimeters and then like i mentioned in the store you should have two types of pencils for multiple choice or scantrons or like bubble sheets that you put into a computer you usually need to fill that out with an hb2 pencil and then i just have this one muji pencil it's like 12 dollars, but i've never lost it and then i just have one scribble pen that's really affordable it's not the most beautiful ink but it writes really smoothly and it's really cheap so i usually just use this for scratch notes the next thing i keep in my backpack is an emergency pouch usually people with periods have one of these so it's basically that's all that's in here two pads two tampons a mini hairbrush if you're ever running late deodorant and a mini perfume because i have an irrational fear of smelling bad and last but not least i just have two spare hair ties and a mini lip balm because i hate the chap lips another thing that i always like to have in my backpack is my wallet if you have a debit or like a local bus card and my water bottle just to stay hydrated throughout the day i think the one thing that i'm missing is hand sanitizer i usually keep it in my purse that is everything that i keep in my backpack so the first piece of advice that i have for you guys is actually one that my mom used to make me do when i was in elementary school and that's fix my sleep schedule getting sufficient sleep which is seven to eight hours for teens and young adults is actually so important for you physically mentally like emotionally and looking back when i was in high school is something that i wish i prioritized it also helps you so much in terms of productivity there's absolutely no point continuing to work when you're sleep deprived because none of the new information that you're seeing is actually going to stick cramming is kind of counterproductive because you'll have to go through the exact same process at midterm and at finals so you might as well start studying like properly from the beginning and also just like break up your tasks so that is some of the reason why i believe sleep is super important and why i think you should make it a priority this year i always practice sleeping earlier and waking up earlier like a week before school starts if you're not a morning person like me then i highly recommend you do this it just it just makes adjusting to the new school year way easier my next piece of advice is creating a simple but effective morning routine having a 10-step morning routine is not realistic for students at all in my opinion because if we're being honest we're usually hitting snooze on our alarms and we're usually rushing out the door so what i do is i recognize and prioritize small but important steps that i want to complete every morning so for me these would be the five steps that i would do in the morning one is washing my face and doing my morning skincare routine wearing sunscreen two is brushing my teeth three is checking my bag that everything's been packed the night before so i'm not leaving any assignments or projects at home by accident four would be eating a proper breakfast so my go-to is usually toast peanut butter and fruit just so i can get like most of the food groups and also just take your multivitamins five would be packing my lunch snacks and water if i didn't do that the night before or grabbing cash to use at the cafeteria but now this is what my high school morning routine looked like because i was usually pressed for time as a night owl but feel free to adjust this routine to whatever you deem more important my next tip for preparing for the new school year and just how to start the new school year strong is finding an organization system that works for you so i personally use a combination of apps it's no shocker that i love to use notion i have made countless notion templates i think i make a new one every semester so i will be doing that again this year in a different video so just stay tuned for that this is what my old notion setup looked like for my second year of university i had a calendar here where i put every assignment quiz test meeting just so i could keep track of everything this is a master to-do list i also have a grade calculator here so i know how much everything is weighted and how much percent i've earned or have lost but yeah stay tuned for the new notion template coming out this semester i also use identity just to declutter my website and iCalendar on my macbook because it connects to my hotmail and i also am still a little old school with post-it notes and notepads i usually use post-it notes and i actually stick them to my monitors so it's physically standing out to me and i'm less likely to forget about it and i also just use notepads to write down any random ideas or thoughts so i don't forget them and so i don't break focus when i'm studying and like when they come up so i always have those like littered around my desk usually and i really harp on you guys to find an organization system that works for you because i think being organized is one of the most important traits of being a student there are so many different demands and expectations of a student students have all their different classes they have extracurriculars some are in sports some have jobs we have personal lives so finding a system that can organize all the different demands is really important i don't think i'd be nearly as successful as a student if i wasn't organized or know how to manage my time effectively so i highly recommend that you get on this early if you really want to start the new school year strong and my last tip that plays into the whole student time management and organization is eliminating your distractions so for most students i find that the number one distraction is your phone or social media so improving your self-discipline is really important and there are obvious ways to make this easier such as deleting the apps themselves or turning off notifications in your phone settings so i have a bunch of 
different do not disturb modes on my phone so i have a focus mode which i use for studying or working and this just silences all notifications the only thing it allows is messages from my parents and my siblings because the odds of them tagging me in something or sending me memes are like very slim it doesn't allow my friends at all because i am most likely to get distracted by them then i also just have silence which is exactly what it says it doesn't allow anyone any apps nothing this is what i use when it's like exam season and i don't want to be bothered by anyone or anything and then i just have the general do not disturb which is a little less strict it allows my friends and my family but still no apps and when i do want to have some screen time i just turn off all the modes and i allow notifications from everyone and any app i think using do not disturb levels can really help with your self-discipline the ideal situation would be that you don't get distracted by anything even if you get notifications but it takes serious practice so identifying and eliminating them one by one is just like the first step that i recommend to all of you guys other things that can be distracting are clutter so always just try to have a clean workspace if you find that your room or your bed is tempting you to take a nap when you get in then try going to a library on the silent floor some people say that ambience helps them study but i don't actually think that's true if you're easily distracted you'll listen in on other people's conversation or you'll people watch so i believe the best study spot for students is always a silent library or literally a cubicle where you can't see anything except your work so yeah those are my five quick tips on how to prepare for the new school year and that guys is the end of the video thank you so much for watching and i hope you all have a great back to school season and i'll see you in the next one bye